Most doctors, what they do most of the time is to try to diagnose uh, my disease and then offer the best treatment possible, which is something I'm very aware of right now because I'm a bit under the weather. I drove to Manchester yesterday and got a cold on the way. Um, I think it's a cold. I'm not sure. I feel a bit dizzy. I feel a bit something in the throat. I think it's a cold. Uh, I can't go and ask my doctor because my doctor is back in Israel. Uh, and even if I could, even, I, even if I was right now in Israel, it's not so simple to go to the doctor. It takes time. I need to make an appointment. She's not always available. And even if I make an appointment for tomorrow morning, so I have to leave my work and drive to the clinic and then wait in the reception room for 10 minutes or 20 minutes or 30 minutes. And then finally I get to see the doctor. And I don't know how it is with the NHS in the UK, but in Israel, my insurance pays for very short visits, maybe five or ten minutes. That's all that my doctor uh, usually has for me. During these five or ten minutes, when she tries to diagnose my disease, so she would ask me three, four questions about how, I, how I'm feeling. Do you, do you have a headache? Do you feel dizzy? Something like that. She may do one or two simple physical uh, tests. She may ask me to say ah and look into my throat. She may take out a stethoscope and listen to my lungs or my heart. She may uh, measure my heartbeat or my blood pressure. She also knows something about my medical history because she's my personal physician, but obviously she can't remember every illness I ever had and every blood test and DNA scan I ever made. She may look it up on the computer, but again, she doesn't have much time. So she takes these few bits of data about my present and past medical condition, and now, in order to diagnose my disease, she needs to compare that with all the different diseases in the world, could be cold, could be influenza, could be a, a breast cancer, all kinds of things uh, that, that might have these symptoms. And obviously, even the best doctor in the world, she can't really be familiar with all the different medical conditions and all the different diseases in the world. And even if, uh, and, and she obviously also, she can't be updated every day about all the latest medical researches and articles and tests and drugs and, and, and so forth. So both types of data, what she knows about me and what she knows about all the diseases and medical conditions in the world, both are very limited. In addition, uh, my doctor is sometimes uh, sick herself, she is sometimes irritated, she is sometimes hungry, she is sometimes tired. So she doesn't always at her peak of her performance when she comes to diagnose my disease. Now compare that to AI doctors, artificial intelligence doctors, that are already being developed as we speak. The most famous example, but not the only example, is IBM's Watson. Uh, Watson has immense advantages compared to my flesh and blood physician. First of all, Watson can be everywhere, all the time, on my smartphone. Even if I go to give a talk here in London, I can take my personal physician with me on the smartphone. Uh, it accompanies me 24 hours a day, 365 days a, a year. Uh, it has all the time in the world for me. If I want, I can sit on my living room so sofa and just answer questions about my health for hours and hours on end and do all kinds of tests. In fact, Watson doesn't need to wait until I, ask, until I come to Watson and I say, hey, something is wrong, what's wrong with me? Watson will be able to monitor my medical condition all the time using biometric sensors on my body and inside my body. So when something just starts, it will know about it much before I know that something is wrong, and it can try to do something about it to start a treatment, even without my, my knowing it. Uh, in addition, Watson has no or almost no limitations on the amount of data it can access and process. Watson will be able instantly to know my entire medical history, every illness I ever had, every blood test or every DNA test I ever did. In addition, Watson will be able to access uh, such data about my parents and siblings and neighbors and friends and, and, and strangers. 
Uh, the other side of the equation, what about all the diseases in the world? Here too, Watson has immense advantages over uh, flesh and blood doctors. Watson will be able, uh, to a large extent, to be familiar with all the different diseases in the world and with all the newest, latest medical research about disease, about drugs, about this treatment, that treatment. So from this perspective, it's very likely that Watson will be able to diagnose disease and to offer treatment far, far better than any human doctor. Now, when people hear this, they very often say, OK, maybe Watson will be better in diagnosing disease, but there is one thing, one other thing, that we usually um, uh, hope human doctors will do and that Watson will not be able to do, and this is offer uh, emotional support. A human doctor is not some machine, some cold machine that just diagnoses disease and says, take this pill. A good doctor is also very attentive to my emotional condition, and it not just treats my physical difficulties, it also gives me the proper emotional support that in many cases is a vital part of, uh, of, of, of confronting any kind of disease or medical condition. However, this criticism fails to, uh, to, know, to notice that emotions, at least according to modern science, emotions are not some spiritual thing that God gave humans in order to appreciate poetry. Uh, emotions are a biochemical phenomenon that not only Homo sapiens have, all mammals, all birds, and many, many other animals have emotions. They are a biochemical phenomenon. In this sense, emotions are like disease. They are both biochemical phenomena, and therefore it is extremely likely that Watson will be able to diagnose my emotional condition just as it diagnoses my illnesses and my medical problems. Uh, if I go to my, to my human doctor, how does my human doctor know my emotional condition? She relies on two kinds of signals, external signals, that I'm giving, she relies basically on visual signals, like my facial expression or my body movement, my body language, and she relies on audio uh, signals, audio cues. She listens to what I say, not just the contents, but even more importantly, the tone of voice. So if I sit in her office, she looks at my face, she listens to my words, and this is how she knows if I'm angry, if I'm fearful, or whatever. Watson will be able to do all that. Computers are already outperforming humans in uh, uh, diagnosing correctly, in analyzing correctly facial expressions and tone of voice uh, in order to recognize emotions. But much more importantly, an AI like Watson will have access to another and even better source of data about my emotions, data coming from within my body. When my doctor looks at me, when I sit in her office and she looks at me, she sees my face, but she can't see my brain, and she can't see my heart, and she can't see what's happening inside me. Watson will be able to access biometric data coming from the brain, coming from the heart, coming from the bloodstream, and therefore is likely to be able to diagnose my emotional condition far, far better than any human doctor. Now, uh, there are still problems, some technical problems and also legal problems that prevent Watson and things like Watson from replacing most doctors tomorrow morning. It may take five years, 10 years, 20 years. But what we need to realize is that we need to solve these technical problems just once, just once. In the case of human doctors, of flesh and blood doctors, in order to get, to get a doctor, you need to take a person, and then you need 10 years, at least 10 years, of going to medical school and doing all kinds of, of studying and, ex and, and experimenting and, and experiencing in order, after 10 years, and a huge investment in time and money and energy, uh, at the end of this process, you get one doctor. If you want another doctor, you have to start all over again and invest all this time, all this energy, all this money again. 
which is why in many countries around the world, there is an acute shortage of doctors. Um, with Watson, with an AI doctor, you just have to do it once. Even if it costs a hundred billion dollars to solve the technical problems that still prevent Watson from replacing my human doctor, if you invest these hundred billion dollars and solve the problems, what you get is not one doctor. You get an infinite number of doctors available everywhere, all the time, for everybody. Even somebody in the middle of the jungle can have a personal physician on his smartphone or her smartphone, which provides far better medical care than almost any doctor alive today. So the potential is really, uh, is really immense, uh, which is why, again, more and more experts believe that not all doctors, but many doctors, maybe 50, 60, 80 percent of doctors will be replaced by AI uh, within 10, 20, 30 years. Thank you.